So uh, once again, good morning, uh, everyone. My name is, uh, once again, Reverend Denise Schubert. I am the newest addition to the Naples community. Uh, Mark, Reverend Mark and I go way back. We've known each other for a long time. We, in fact, graduated uh, ministerial school together in eons and eons ago. But I've come here really with a very strong mission to anchor the sacred service uh, ministry for this community. And so to talk about the beloved community community today is absolutely perfect. And it is, I am passionate about it. So I just look forward to sharing that with you. The term uh, beloved community originally was uh, brought forward by a 20th century philosopher by the name of jo Josiah Royce, but it was brought into mainstream America by Mar uh, Martin Luther King Jr. in a 1949 sermon where he connected the beloved community with agape love or brotherly love or unconditional love. And it is, he called the beloved community the way to transform people in relationships, to create communities grounded in reconciliation and friendship and forgiveness and human dignity, earmarked by the qualities of nonviolence, courage, understanding, trust, and love. So beloved community, is way more than merely a group of disconnected people coming together in a church environment on a Sunday morning. It is a place, uh, it's a place, it's a consciousness, it's an intention, which by necessity awakens the individual first and then binds awakened individuals together in, uh, in a kind of dedication to be difference makers in the world. So ultimately, our spiritual path and our spiritual journey must render us awakened citizens in a global environment. Now, I know it sounds big, but, but it's really, it's, we, you know, we say we're made in the image and likeness of good, in the image and likeness of God. And there is nothing there other than givingness, nothing there other than to be in service to the, to the to the sacred and service to the idea of an awakened world. So I'm here today to really exalt you. I'm here today to really, um, to we're here to celebrate who Unity Naples is as a community, as a beloved community. And it's changed, you know, we've, uh, we are now not just a local community in Naples, Florida, in a brick and mortar, beautiful, beautiful campus. I hope you all get a chance to visit it someday. But we're also a global community. Partly one of the blessings of this time, the past six months has been that our global community has grown. So we're here together to grow, to, to raise up our families, to, uh, to find our common commitment to a world that can work for everyone. So I wanted to take a minute and just share what community means to me because it means everything. Now you may see me here, you know, I look this way, but I didn't always look this way. The, the glow was not always there. Um, <clears throat> and I think they're in the, in the community. We need a community because there is something about praying together, uh, learning together, uh, growing together, helping each other that we simply cannot do while we are sitting on our couch as much as we would like to. So I would say that it is a true statement that my life was salvaged by a beloved community in 1995 at the Agape International Spiritual Center, which, by the way, at that time was not inter international. It was about 200 people, maybe even smaller than our community is right now. And uh, I use the word salvage literally. I chose that word because when I first arrived there in 1995, I was a hot mess. I was... 40 pounds heavier. I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. I was in a job and a marriage that were both languishing, that were bringing me no joy. So I was a little lost, you know, I was a little sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sure you can relate. I'm sure there are people, you know, that we often we come into a spiritual teaching kind of pulled by, pushed by pain, unfortunately. But <clears throat> that community changed me. It salvaged me. You know, and uh, besides, uh, more important than what I lost, which was uh, 40 pounds, right? I did find my community and I did find God there as well. So I did find my spiritual, my sacred center. But what I found was not as important as what I lost. Besides the 40 pounds, the husband and the, and the nicotine habit, 
I lost my loneliness. I lost my skepticism and my pessimism. And uh, I also found a community. Now, I was raised by two only children, by only their mothers. So I have no aunts, no uncles, no cousins, no grandpas, no, that just, no community. And this family, uh, though I adore them now, I'm grateful to them forever. There was no community there. They didn't know how to raise, they had six children. They didn't know how to raise us. And we had no community in our home. So the, the beloved community gave me a spiritual family and it allowed me to grow and, and uh, find a way to a higher why of being alive, right? A higher purpose in life. You know, um, we, everyone needs a higher, per, a higher why. Like, why are we alive? We are not alive to uh, use our credit cards, to uh, drink good wine, to uh, sit in front of the TV, play computer games. We are alive in order to serve a divine idea. Now, <clears throat> unfortunately or fortunately, uh, this divine idea uh, is a pre, uh, there's a precursor to it, which is your transformation. So personal transformation comes before global transformation can come. There, uh, there's a quote by Rumi that I'm in love with that I found, and it is this. It was yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself. So why is this? Well, it's really kind of Gandhi said it first. He said, we must become the change we wish to see. Now, most of us do realize that changing the world, attempting to change the world, attempting to change the world that the ego has made especially is nothing but a boatload of frustration, nothing but a boatload of disappointment. And why is because we cannot change anything, right? That everybody, every single person lives in their own experience of reality because we were raised and we were conditioned. We were conditioned what to think, what to believe, what's good, what's right, what's wrong. What Miguel Ruiz called the domestication of humans. I love that. So everyone has their own opinions and everyone stands where they are with their opinions and their righteous indignation that, their, that our opinion is the right way, the right one. And what happens when this happens, and we all know what happens, what happens is conflict, what happens is arguments, what happens is wars, death, and destruction. Welcome to the world that the ego has made. It is a world of separation where nobody is right. So therefore, how we uh, make our mark on the world, how we contribute, how we are in service, in sacred service, serving the sacred in our planet to make it a healthy place for all of us to live is we become a healthy person. So the beloved community provides us with the environment and opportunities to transform and transcend our domestication and to step into a life of extraordinary love and authenticity. This community offers us that. So once we've transformed, <clears throat> once we've found our own spiritual center, once we've awakened ourselves, and by the way, it's a process. For most people, it's not like, you know, genie, boop. It's not like that. It's a, it's, you'll see in a moment, it takes a lot of commitment and tenacity and work. I think Reverend Mark said, told a story last week of, you know, that you have to want to know God. You have to want that life that experience more as much as you want a breath when you're being held underwater. So after personal transformation comes unity consciousness, <clears throat> knowing that the spirit is at the center of all things. Michael Beckwith said the beloved community is based on the awareness that we are all one, that we are the world. And the good news, there's really good news that in addition to the world that the ego has made, there is a world that God has made. And in that world, we are one. You know, Eric Butterworth said that God is, uh, by the way, Eric Butterworth is an amazing unity minister. He's not with us anymore, but amazing man to study if you want to study a unity minister. Anyway, he said that God is not in us like a raisin in a roll. 
Rather, we are in God like a wave on the ocean. In that ocean, in that world, you and I are waves. All of us, each of us, waves on the same ocean. And that excludes no one. There is no one who is not an individualized expression of God. There is no one who does not have divinity within them. There is no one we can leave out of our hearts. There is no one we can leave out of our beloved community. And when we step into the truth of that, we transform. We transform from someone who has an opinion over which we would uh, fight with others to be right into someone who lives from the heart, into someone who can live from love. That, you know, the, the I that we think we are is actually an us. And the me I think I am is actually a we. And this shift in consciousness will make you so happy. And it's not easy because most of us are not well-equipped, trained, taught uh, on how to, how to be with others in a way that enlivens us, us rather than depletes us. So Michael, uh, Dr. Michael also said, we are not here to save the world but to serve an emerging paradigm of love, connectedness, and generosity of heart. This is the meaning of sacred service. This is the meaning of the beloved community. The beloved community leads us home to our authentic self and to our inherent interconnectedness. So you might be asking the question, why do I need a community? Or why can't I just grow at home? I'm, I know some of you do, because I was like you. I didn't really like people too much. I don't want to be around people too much in 1995. They kind of scared me, you know. But I am here to tell you, it, 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 a community is going to make your heart sing. So in a really great place like this one, and this is a great place, and I know that there are faith-based places that are not so great, right, that do not teach what we teach, do not know the truth we know, that are, that in and of themselves bring a little judgment. This is not us. This beloved community is a great place. And here you can be inspired. You can be educated and empowered to live your life from a spiritual perspective. You have opportunities to learn and use many pow powerful practices to help you. You know what they are if you've been here for a while. Affirmative prayer, visioning, meditation, affirmations, forgiveness, gratitude, Studying and tithing. Study, tithing, and sacred service. Now, <clears throat> two of these, tithing and sacred service, and please keep in mind, I have an agenda here. I am yours, I am in charge of, responsible for creating, arising a sacred service ministry here so that we can serve this community and we can serve the Southwest Florida community and we can serve the global community. So time at uh, tithing and service specifically serve the Unity Naples community because you know, you know this, that without our time, our treasure and our talent, the community doesn't exist. You know, it, the village belongs to the villagers. It does not belong to the board of trustees or to your ministers. The community belongs to you. So, it's our job. It's our holy job. Not, it's our joy. It's not even our job. It is our joy to serve it. Now, I do know that we live in a culture that indoctrinates us into this idea of not enough. We don't have enough money. I don't have enough money to give. I don't have enough time to give. I don't have enough love to give. I'm just trying to eke out my own life. Don't ask me for anything. And we have to get over this because it leads us to believe that we are restricted, that we are limited, and that we, and then we become in life like um, grasping and trying to get our good. We become takers. But as spiritual giants, we learn to live from the inside out. We learn that we have enough of everything and that once we get that, not only does our own life uh, end up in the stream of well-being that is the spiritual universe that God has made, but then we're free to raise, praise, and uplift all. So being in a spiritual community, in a beloved community that has this as its intention, that we learn how to break down the barriers and blocks between us and other people. 
we learn how to be with them without being triggered, without being um, reactive, right? You know, we learn how to uh, respond. So, uh, and we learn, I'm going to tell you, if you want to, if you want to grow, you put yourself on a sacred service team. Do you know why? Because under, with my love and attention and this community support, you are going to learn how to be patient. You're going to learn how to be flexible. You're going to learn how to be non-judgmental. You're going to learn how to be tolerant. You're going to learn how to forgive and accept people. You're going to learn how to play. And then we band together to share in a shared vision to be conscious difference makers in creating a world that works for everyone. Temple Hayes, Dr. Temple Hayes, she's a unity minister up in St. Pete. She said this beautiful thing at a service I was at once with her. And she said, united we stand, divided we are merely a distraction. I love that. Divided we are a distraction. Okay, because remember, we're one. We're we're. I mean, it looks like there are 7 billion waves, but there's only one ocean. We're all one. All right. So what does it actually mean to serve the sacred? What does it mean? So <clears throat> in this, in our spiritual growth, we stabilize our inner life. And it's, as such, we stabilize our life structures. So after, it may take a minute. I, I don't know. I'm going to say it probably took me two years, I think, really, to get everything settled down, my health, my relationships, you know, my work, my creativity, balance in my spiritual life, my physical life, my mental life. It took a minute. But once all that happens, we are then no longer absorbed by fixing our, ourselves, right? Once you lose the five pounds, the five pounds are lost. So the, the uh, fifth principle of unity is that we must live the truth that we know. That is not enough to know it. We have to, it has to show up in our life. We, another way of saying this, we have to demonstrate. We have to demonstrate the truth that we know. So to be a difference maker, or what Dr. Michael Beckwith called a spiritual revolutionary, and revolutionary is defined as one who is involved with causing a dramatic change. And I don't know about you, but for me, in my lifetime, I want to be a dramatic change maker. That's my mark, right? I want to see this world work better. So, uh, so we have to change ourselves and learn how to play well with others. So I'm going to give you three how-tos because I know people love the how-tos. So here's the how-tos. I'm just going to give you a few things and then we're going to keep going uh, just for a few more minutes. So as a conscious awakened person who wants to uh, be a part of the beloved community, you get to do your best. Number one, do your best not to take sides, to complain, judge, or criticize. Do your best not to do it. Do your best to turn your cheek. Do your best to hold your tongue. Do your best to remember that whoever you're judging or criticizing or taking sides with is a wave, just like you. On the, on the path, just like you. You may be two steps further than they are, but they are as divine as you. Number two, don't gossip. Don't annihilate. Don't join in the annihilation of another being. Because I'm telling you, if you annihilate a wave, you're gonna, that's going to boomerang right back to you. So God, how God loves, God loves you unconditionally. God loves the saint and the sinner exactly the same. Because he doesn't see the flaws. Because in truth, you have no flaws. You know, you were raised up in the world the ego made. But you're not going to live there anymore. You want to live in the world the spirit made. So number three, uh, be for something and against nothing. You know, in we teach that we live uh, by and through a uh, the law of cause and effect. If you are against war, guess what you get more of? War. If you're against whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're against, you're going to get more of that. So just be for things. Be for peace. Be for reconciliation. Be for love. Be for harmony. Be for those things. And we will. you will see those things in your life. So the truth is we can't be afford, we can't afford to be messing around for too long. The world is in a heck of a mess if in my view. And I know we can't fix it, we can only change ourselves, but it gives me reason to work on myself. So through our inner personal work, we prepare ourselves to step into a life of a spiritual maturity. 
to be a spiritually mature being. We grow up ready and able to live, putting the spiritual values of love, inclusivity, compassion, kindness, and tolerance to be the activity of not only our thinking, but also our actions. So, <clears throat> you know, I have this, uh, I can't wait to meet you, really. I can't make, wait to meet the people who step forward to come play with me because I'm a person who wants to climb Mount Everest, right? I'm a person who always wants to do the best and the most, uh, the thing with the biggest payoff. But I'm going to tell you, when I climb Mount Everest, I want to climb Mount Everest with people who are as committed as I am, right? It's really not a good idea to be climbing Mount Everest with somebody who can't show up because they're having a bad hair day or because they just don't feel like it. Because you know what happens when you climb Mount Everest with somebody who's having a bad hair day and they're affected by that? You die. Because when you're doing something worthy of doing, it takes everyone to pay to be awake right? And paying attention. So, so through our inner work, truly, we discover that we are enough. We discover we have enough. We discover that we have ample gifts and talents, time, treasure to participate, to be in life fully. And if, it, if it's not us, if it's not us, who will it be? And if it's not now, when will it be? And seriously, here's here. Somebody said this to me once, if I can't do it, if I can't do it, what, what makes me believe that anyone can do it? So if you and I cannot make this world work, if we cannot make it healthier, spiritually, mentally, physically uh, healthier, emotionally healthier, why, do, why would we think that it can't be done? How we know is we become emotionally, spiritually, physically, and mentally healthier. That's what happens. And then we know it can be done then we know we have proof and then we can go about the business of being in sacred service to all. So I thought you would never ask, but I know your next question is how can you serve the sacred right here at unity Naples? Because it's time. The call, here's the call to action. So it is my fervent passion and commitment that unity Naples become a destination for all who are seeking for all who are wanting to awaken to their authentic self. For all who want to step into a life of purpose and radical well-being and to be a beneficial presence on this planet, I want this, I want our beloved community to be that wide open and inviting. Now we have been virtual for almost six months, and our glorious reopening, I want you to really hear this. Our reopening is going to be in two Sundays, two weeks from today. I'm going to be on campus, Reverend Mark's going to be on campus, everyone who's feeling called is going to be on campus, and we need to be ready for them. Two weeks. So, and our commitment is that it be safe, stunning, spectacular. We're following all the CDC guidelines. We'll talk more about that on Tuesday, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But people are coming home to their spiritual family, and we need to be there to greet them. Maybe no hugging, maybe no hugging right now, but we can, you know, virtual hug. But certainly with friendly eyes and a smile behind our mask, you know. So I invite you to right now ask whether or not you're willing to consider being on the sacred service team as a team member or as a leader. And the, there is a magic number we need to have this be stunning, spectacular and safe. And it's 15 people. This Sunday and every Sunday, 15 people. And many hands make for light work. So this is not a burden. This is a joy. So um, how can you let me know that you're going to be one of those 15 people? That's the next question, right? So here's how you can let me know. You can email me. And I think we have a slide. Yes, you can email me at revdenise at unitynaples.org. And you can do that today. I would love to hear from you. Uh, you can also attend this coming Tuesday, like not today, not tomorrow, but the following day on Tuesday at 7 p.m. is a Zoom meeting open to everyone. And during that meeting, we will lay out how the campus is going to reopen so that it's safe and spectacular and stunning and what there is to do. And you get to, dis 
see how you what you want to do, how you want to play, or if you want to play. We know that some of you won't be ready yet, and that is perfectly fine because we're going to stream forever into our global community. You know, Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of committed individuals can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. So, you know, we are not just uh, a community of individuals that come together on a Sunday, that we are going to work and strive to become a beloved community, connected in love and um, of service, of value to the world around us. You know, global transformation, reform and awakening will come about as more and more and more of us begin to apply the principles and practices of the beloved community and allow the vibration of agape love to fill our hearts. Personal transformation precedes global change. As, as awakened beings, we will come to know very intimately that in truth, the entire planet is our beloved community. Every person, our brother and sister, every animal, a relative. So awaken we must, and we do this right here in our local community. We do it right here in Naples Unity. So I want you to get excited. I want you to come out and play. I cannot wait to meet you. I, I can't even begin to tell you how much I appreciate you. So namaste, let us pray together. Let us pray. Oh, so as we, as we pray, you know, when we pray here, we're not uh, praying to anything outside of us. We are praying to align our consciousness with the world that God has made. So just join me, just join me, close your outer eyes. You know, this is a symbolic gesture where we allow the outer world to simply just be where it is. You know, the world as it is, this man-made world was created by consciousness. And when we change our consciousness, the outside world will change. So it in many ways is crude and temporary. And as we close our outer eyes, we open our inner eyes, we gaze into the space and place and dimensions within us that is whole and perfect and complete, that is divine, that is sacred, that is uh, tolerant, accepting, loving, kind, compassionate. Because why? Because God's in there. We are, we are waves on the ocean of good. And so I know that there is a power and a presence. We call, I call it God. I love the word God. We call it God. And I know that this power and presence is one. I am one with it. We are united. We are connected. We are one. And I know that as this is true for me, it's true for each and every one of us. You are one with that which created the entire universe and all of its beauty and wonder and all. So it's from that place of connection and the beloved community that I speak my word for and about each person within the sound of my voice, simply and fully recognizing your divinity, fully and recognizing that there is something within you that is indestructible, unharmable, unlosable, that right here and right now, you are perfect. And it is from that perfection that we move into a beloved community, we move into sacred service, we move into being givers. And it is good, it will fulfill, it fulfills us, it satisfies us, it's who we are. And so I am so grateful, so grateful for this opportunity to be with you, so grateful for this opportunity to speak this word, to know this truth, to uh, celebrate our waveness together. And to know that as we move forward from this day, that together we create a magnificent beloved community open to all and knowing that all will come. And so for this and so much more than my words could ever say, I am grateful. I just simply release this word into the magnificent action of spiritual laws that are even now, even now moving molecules around to make my word manifest. The word being clothed in flesh. And so I'm grateful for the words just simply Affirm this for ourselves and each other, and what is to be the possibility that we are stepping in by joining you in saying, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. Woo.